Tim with your words of grace today for my study. I want to answer the question today that maybe you're thinking about because Passion Week coming up this Sunday is Palm Sunday. What is Palm Sunday? What does it have to do with these palms? And then the significance to you even, not just the meaning, but the significance to you. Uh, now, it's recorded in all of your Gospels, meaning it's very significant, right? If it's in each one. And so let's just write down the references. We're going to look at Matthew 21, 1 through 11. It's in Mark 44. And it's in John. John's the only one that mentions palm branches. Uh, so, right... That's not the most significant thing about Palm Sunday. John 12, 12 through 19. So we have this, these palm branches being spread in the road during Palm Sunday event. As Jesus enters uh, his last week on earth, what we call Passion Week, the week of his suffering, the first Sunday before Resurrection Sunday, before Thursday's High Holy Passover Day, Jesus comes into Jerusalem Sunday and is received, really, as a king. Matthew, Mark, and Luke just mentioned branches and more significant, I think, clothing. Like They would only have two pairs, two different outfits, if that. And they're strewing their, they're strewing their clothes on the floor as the donkey that Jesus is riding to Jerusalem. And they're crying, save. In fact, let me read that for you. Let's read Matthew. Turn to Matthew. The disciples went and did just as Jesus instructed. They got the donkey and the colt, laid their coats on them. He sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. The crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All right, so... So what's interesting here is not that someone took and, and cut a piece of the tree, right? Okay, so not a bad thing, right? It's plastic, so that's a problem, but actually this just comes off. Um, but but the, the palm branch will, will grow back. The issue is that they're, they're, what they're saying, they're saying something much more significant. Of course, first of all, that he is king. They're receiving him, save us. Deliver us, King, as you come. And so there's a, there's a kind of a nomination of, of who will rule the land here. And, and Jesus is winning that nomination in the, in the eyes of the people. Jesus is winning that nomination. But what's most significant about all of this is what they're quoting. Uh, they're quoting a passage in Psalm 118. And, and this is the most significant part of of Palm Sunday is this it's, psalm I don't know if I can write sideways here Psalm 118 and and that is what we should meditate on the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone this is the Lord's doing it is marvelous in our eyes this is the day which the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it O oh Lord do save we beseech you. O oh Lord, we beseech you. Do send prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Right? We just read that from Matthew. The Lord is God. He has given us light. And so you have uh, several other ideas here that come in. First of all, you, what jumps out at you, I would hope you would think, is that word say. The Hebrew word hashang, if I remember correctly, uh, or hosanna. This whiteboard has no spell check, so I promise nothing as far as spelling goes. So there's a desire for deliverance, but they're thinking more military, physical deliverance. What did that passage also say? What was another image that came up there? The stone, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So there's this stone right in the same passage, this what we call a messianic or a psalm that talks about the Messiah coming to rule as king of Israel, but he would be one that's rejected by 
the builders, the, the religious leaders, the stone which the builders rejected becomes the building block, the main building block. This is what God does, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Okay, so how does this stone become the one who can save if he's rejected? And this is the miraculous, un like the, just the unbelievable message of Palm Sunday. Look in your Bible to verse 27. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Bind the festival sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. And so there's this other image now of an altar and blood being spilt on that altar by a sacrifice. The sacrifice had to be bound. And we find there the 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 rejection by the builders becomes the way that the king messiah would become the sacrifice and that would be how he is able to save now he's able to save now because he becomes a sacrifice and really in that he becomes our king as well and so this is a very significant day a very significant psalm that everyone is crying out that he would be messiah but even embracing him as Messiah, they are stating that this would be the stone that's rejected. And so the crowd that cries Messiah cries crucify in just a few days. And he will go to the cross and he will be the sacrifice for your sin and my sin. So the significance of Palm Sunday to you today would be, are you trusting in this Jesus? Prophesied Psalm 118, cried out there in Jerusalem streets as he comes in mounted upon a donkey. Um, will you receive him as your king? Will you claim him to be savior? Will you cry out with the crowd, save now, Hosanna, save now based on your death, burial, and resurrection. All right, thanks for joining me for these words of grace today from Psalm 118 and Matthew 21. Have a great day.